everybody welcome back so I'm feeling pretty good about where our custom clock controls are at right now we've learned a lot throughout the series but we still have some improvements we can make so one of the biggest improvements that I want to make is that whenever our screen gets small I want our clock to get smaller too and whenever we get big I want it to expand so I want the clock to be responsive and adjust to the size of its container but before we get into that, let's clean up our clock real quick. So we have these validation callbacks set up, and all they do is make sure that the seconds are not odd. But they were pretty much just for demonstration, so I want to get rid of them because they aren't very practical. Again, they were just to show off validation callbacks. So let's get rid of those. And we still need this property change so that we can raise that event. So now that we have that out of the way, Let's head into our analog clock style and start making the size of the clock actually responsive. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of the width and the height that we specify on the clock because we are taking the training wheels off and we are going to do this dynamically. So let's see how that looks just by getting rid of that. So as you can see the biggest problem we have here is that it doesn't stay as a circle but if we get the container for the clock to be a circle then it actually looks pretty good so all we need to do is make sure that our clock stays at a circle so what we can do for that is actually bind the width of the ellipse so the width of this clock part we can bind that to the actual height of not the clock itself but the container for the clock so we're not actually going to bind the to the actual height of the clock because you might run into some quirky bugs so we're just going to bind to this container because they are going to be the same size anyways because this clock fills its container so if we do that so this actually works out pretty well as you can see right off the bat we have a circle we get smaller and our clock gets skinnier as well so we maintain that circle of course the clock hands they go off the edge because we have those hard-coded lengthwise but we'll fix that but the only problem we have is that since our width is binded to the actual height if our height stays tall and our width gets skinny then our clock is going to go off the edge because our clock stays too wide so what we need to do in this situation is if the height is greater than the width, so the situation that we're in right now, we need to bind the height to the width of the clock so that it can be the same width and it'll stay as a circle and stay within the container and not overrun the edges as we see here. So to do that, we need to somehow set up the XAML to switch the binding around whenever the height is greater than the width. So to do that, we are going to set up a style for this ellipse. So let's specify the style, set that up like any other style, target the ellipse. And inside here we are going to have some triggers. We're going to have a data trigger. And if our trigger evaluates to true, then we are going to do that swap that we just talked about. So what are we testing inside this trigger? We need to test that if the height is greater than the width, then we need to bind the height to the actual width of the clock. So that's, it's a little bit difficult to wrap even my head around. It might be difficult for you guys to wrap your head around, but we're going to see it in action. And the main thing here is that we are going to use a multi-binding and a multi-value converter. So let's set up a multi-binding. And of course, we are checking to see if the height is greater than the width. So we're going to specify those as the properties that our multi-binding is going to use. So let's set up a binding. And the path is going to be the actual height of the clock. And we're also going to pass in the actual width of this clock as well. And what we need to do is check if the height is greater than the width. So to do that, we are going to need a converter. And we are going to have to create that converter. So let's actually create a new folder here. 
four converters and this is going to be called the greater than multi-converter so let's make that public and it's going to be an i multi-value converter because it's going to take in multiple values so let's implement that interface and all we're going to do here so we need to make sure that the values that get passed into this converter are not null and we need to make sure that the values dot length equals 2 so that is the situation that we have here we're passing in both of these values and we want to make sure that the height is greater than the width so we get both of those and then we need to make sure that we can parse the first value to a double so like that we can put it in a variable we'll call this number one and then we also need to make sure that we can parse the second number to a double as well and now we have both of these numbers and what we can do is do a little ternary operator here so if all of this evaluates the true then all we're going to do is return the result of number one greater than number two so if the first number is greater than the second number we'll return true and if none of this validation worked then we're just going to return false so now that we have this converter we can go back into here and we can import it into our control so let's bring in the namespace we're going to call this converters and just point it to that converters namespace that we just created and then we can set up a resource that uses that converter give it a key so we can use it in our control template we'll call it greater than multi converter and we can just point it with this static resource so it points to this resource that we defined and that is the converter so now we have this so if the height is greater than the width after going through this multi converter if that evaluates to true which we specified up here as our data trigger then we're going to do some things in this setter and what we need to do is set the property of height equal to a binding to the actual width of the clock so this is the opposite of what we set up before but we deleted that so let's actually add that again so by default if the height is not greater than the width then we are going to bind the width to the actual height and one thing we need to do is make sure that the height is auto as well so that it takes up all the space since we're binding to that value and then we'll do the opposite down here set the width as auto and just like that we should be good to test this out so let's give that a try and now same thing as before we get shorter and our clock gets skinnier but now if we get skinny our clock also gets shorter so everything is working out perfectly and real quick I actually see a bug with this digital clock so this should be like 03 since that's the second so let me fix that real quick because that kind of bothers me and we can just do a string format and pad some zeros so that it gives a total length of two like that okay I guess I should make sure that actually worked and okay that looks good so now our clock is correctly growing and shrinking that looks great but the only problem we have left is that these hands don't extend all the way to the end they are not dynamic they go off the edge if the clock gets too small so we're going to have to fix that and make sure that these hands are relative to the size of the clock and that actually isn't too hard to fix because thankfully the hands are still in the center so all we need to do is just adjust the length and to do that instead of hard coding it let's get rid of that and we are going to bind we're going to bind the length to the actual height of the clock 
But obviously, if we bind this to the actual height of the clock, it's going to be as long as the height of the clock. And that's not what we want. We want it to be at most half the length of the height of the clock. So we are going to create another converter here. And this one is going to be a division converter. So we're going to be able to divide this actual height by whatever converter parameter that we put in this property right here. So let's set that up. And instead of a multi-value converter that we did for this greater than converter, this is going to be an I value converter because all that we're passing in as the value is the actual height that we have right here. So for this converter, we're just going to do this in one statement again. We need to make sure that the value can be parsed to a double. So we'll put that in a variable and we'll call this numerator. So I'm using my math vocabulary here. So this is the top number in a division statement. And then we also need to make sure that the parameter can be parsed to a double as well. This is going to be the denominator, so the bottom number. And then, of course, we need to make sure that the denominator is not zero, so that we don't get divide by zero exceptions. And if all of this passes, then we are going to return the numerator divided by the denominator. And if it doesn't pass, then let's just go ahead and return zero. So now we have this converter set up. Same thing as before. Let's bring that in, same namespace, so we can just specify it like that, give it a key, and let's use it down here. So the converter is going to be the division converter, and we are going to put in 2, because we want to divide by 2. But, of course, we need negative numbers here, so we are going to make this a negative 2. And another thing, this is the hour hand, so if we divide by negative 2, it's going to extend all the way to the edge of the circle of the clock. And that's not what the hour hand does. It goes about like halfway. So we're going to make this negative 4. So that it's about a quarter of the height of the clock. So it goes from the center and about halfway to the edge. And let's do this for our other line. So we can just copy this converter and put it in like that. And same thing for our second hand as well. And the converter parameter instead, we do want this to go a little bit farther. So we're gonna do negative 2.5. So not all the way to the edge, but pretty close. And now let's go ahead and check this out. And there we go. Okay, so that's our hour hand right there going about halfway. Our second hands and minute hands look good as well. And if we get bigger, they get longer as well. So that is perfect. That is our clock. It's looking awesome. But one thing that I just realized is that if we get shorter, all is good. Our hands look great. But if we get too skinny, the hands, they extend off the edge because we are binding to this root element. So we're binding to this grid. And of course, that is taking up this entire space right here. So we need to actually bind to the clock. Because we are adjusting the height and width of this clock with this grid and then multi-converter. So we want to use that height and width instead, not the height and width of the grid. So let's go ahead and do that. And as you can see, as we get skinnier, our hands get shorter as well. If we get shorter, our hands don't go off the edge still. So all is good. We officially have this dynamic sizing working out pretty well, and I'm pretty satisfied with this clock. So again, just to review, we have this data trigger binding to the height and the width. When the height is greater than the width, then we want to bind 
the height to the actual width instead of binding the width to the actual height that is just like a mouthful that is really hard to explain I hope you guys understand just by like me demonstrating it but the big takeaway here is just showing off how you can use multi bindings and multi value converters to accomplish some pretty advanced things like checking to make sure that a height is greater than another value all in XAML that's pretty powerful and then another thing we did was make sure that the length of these lines is relative to the size of the clock and we did that with a division converter and a converter parameter so pretty powerful things with converters in WPF if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more if you have any questions criticisms or comments be sure to leave them in the comments section and if you have any suggestions for the series be sure to let me know but other than that thank you for watching and I hope you're continuing to learn new things.